Welcome world to Life, Love and Wellness Global, a worldwide wellness movement. I am Reverend Sandy Rogers and as the creator of this historic event, it is my pleasure to welcome you. We come together to bring you this historic event. We have practitioners, uh, holistic, um, pr holistic practitioners, we have uh, medical doctors, we have spiritual individuals. This event is so lovingly dedicated to my mother, Mrs. Barbara Dean Brown. And my mother taught me like 40 plus years ago about the importance and the meaning behind herbs. And she would always say, we don't know what they putting in those pills. So you better not, you know, get hooked on prescription drugs. And so we listened to mom, but not all of us paid attention. My sister, bless her heart, uh, was diagnosed recently thereafter with asthma and uh, she was prescribed prednisone which is a very powerful steroid and my sister actually got hooked on steroids like someone out on the street kind of hooked you know like on heroin or crack or something like that and so my mom and my sister are both on the other side living in the other dimension but they're upholding me and this is dedicated to their memory. So we don't want to come and uh, make you change your mind about what you're doing. We just want to provide information to you, something different so that you have options to, to choose from so that you're not stuck because the, uh, the environment that we now live in, the fast foods, the toxins in the air that we breathe and in the water that we drink and the processed foods and all of that is causing havoc on this precious body temple. So God created our bodies to heal themselves, but they can only heal themselves when they're fed and they're nourished and they're stress free. And so the 60 uh, or so or more uh, experts that we have are bringing you this worldwide wellness movement in an attempt to share their testimonies and their information with you. So we have uh, from age 14 on up. I don't even know what the oldest age is. I think 88 uh, or something. So you see that's a wide range of knowledge that we're bringing you. And so we hope that you come and that you get all the knowledge that you need to affect a positive change on your life and uh, share this with others. Uh, it's free, it's online, and so we're just so thankful that you decided to be a part of our listening community, the viewing community, and we certainly appreciate you for giving us your time of day and your energy and your efforts to being uh, with us and to being a part of this historic event. We have pulled together people of color for you, by you, right? So we want to make sure that you understand that we too, melanated people, people with color, can enjoy, practice, and participate in some of these modalities that others have been doing for centuries and that is pretty new to our community. So we talk about Qigong, we talk about meditation, yoga, um, spiritual work from a different perspective than religion. So we talk about the spirituality aspect. We talk about abuse in the families. We talk about all kinds of subject because, subjects because we know that in our communities there are layers and layers and layers and layers of stuff that we never talk about that's causing uh, a negative effect on our bodies and its healing process. So we address it, whatever it is, and we hope that you will benefit from the many experts that we have and that you walk away with lots of knowledge and not lots of new information and that you become fully empowered to share information with others. So thank you for being with us. We love you and we bless you. And we look forward to doing this again, but thanks for being here with the first one. We appreciate you.
My name is Joseph Dillard, and I've been in financial services for about 30 years. Now, financial education is so important to me because I graduated from Northwestern University with a degree in economics. After I graduated, I got married. Actually, I got married before I graduated. And something that I discovered is that my degree in economics did not teach me how to manage money. Shortly after graduating, I went into financial services. I worked in retail banking, and again, I realized that working in retail banking did not teach me about financial education. My wife and I struggled with debt. We didn't have the knowledge. We ended up having 12 credit cards. So at a very, very young age, we had lots and lots of debt and just struggled. We just didn't know what to do. As you may know, a lot of us don't learn how to manage our money from our parents. We don't learn how to manage money in school. Therefore, as a result, we suffer. We suffer and do the best we can. We learn from celebrities who really don't teach us. They kind of show us, but they don't teach us. We learn from the media who, again, they don't teach us. They do a good job of supporting corporations that tell us. And also, unfortunately, we don't really learn from banks. We make a lot of mistakes from banks. So being in the financial services industry so long, what I learned is a lot of people, especially in the communities of color, suffered because of the lack of financial education. I noticed that a lot of us were getting a lot of NSF fees, non-sufficient fund fees. What was happening is they were, I tell them, you are giving away money. And that's exactly what was happening. They would. Um, spend more than they had in their accounts and unfortunately a lot of them would willingly pay fees back then maybe $25 now between $29 and $40 every time it's done and again a lot of it has to do with never learning how to manage their money I noticed that a lot of people of color in my community and our community were turned down for loans they would definitely readily apply for loans, but they were turned down again because they never learned how to manage their money. Now, after being in financial services for a while and realizing this, I decided, what can I do? I'm an expert because I've been through the same thing. I know what I'm teaching people because, again, I've suffered from debt. I've had a difficult time because I never learned. So I decided I would help people learn how to manage their money because something I learned is learning how to manage your money will literally change your life. And that's something I truly, truly believe. So I started helping people. I started as a budget coach and a financial coach. And one thing that I learned that is so, so important, and this is what the first thing I talk to people about when I talk to them about financial education, it begins with changing the way you think. Changing your thinking is the most important thing. A lot of people think the answer to their problems is making or getting more money. The thing is, if you don't change your thinking, if you're making 10,000 a year, 20,000 a year, 100,000 a year, and you double that, if you do not change your thinking, you will just spend it or waste it away. So I talk to them about changing the way they think, and it's so crucial. It is so crucial, and I always tell them there's a statistic. But there's something that says that even people who have a PhD and make over $100,000 can be in money trouble. So it's not the level of education, it's not the amount of money. Also, there is a documentary on athletes I love, not to make fun of them, but ESPN does a 30 for 30. It's called 30 for 30 Broke. And it's about athletes who, over their careers, maybe made hundreds of millions of dollars and ended up broke. How could that happen, you say? How can you, you're thinking, give me some of that money and I won't have a problem. Well, if you were taught to spend more than you make, then you're going to be broke. So if you make 100 million and spend 125 million, you're broke. So that's why I always tell people, it's not how much money you make, it's what you do with the money you make. That's what's important. Now after that, I have people track what they spend because a lot of times people don't know where their money's going. In fact, I had a client, um, one of my favorite clients, him and his wife made over six figures and they came to me and they were getting ready to walk away from their house. They were just saying, we don't know what to do. We have, 
we can't make our mortgage payments. And they came to me, I went through um, the process with them to introducing what I do, looking at their goals, looking at their financial situation, and we looked at them. And because of my knowledge in financial services, first, I, was helped them, I helped them to refinance their mortgage, rather to modify it, so they ended up with lower mortgage payments. Then I had them track their spending so they could see where their money was going. Because I'm thinking, just like a lot of people do, you're making over six figures, but you have no idea where your money's going. But that is very, very common for a lot of people. So they, what they would do is track their spending for two weeks. One of the biggest, biggest, biggest problems is eating out. And I say it's a big problem because people have no idea how much money they spend eating out. And this couple probably spent $500 to $700 a month eating out. So right there, they um, adjusted their spending and they saved. A lot of people spend a lot of money on cable. To this day, I don't understand how cable can be so expensive, but they will. And a lot of people got, get caught in a trap, still surprises me, they go for 90 day promotions of free. They are offered premium channels for 90 days and they think they're smarter than the cable stations. So at the end of the 90 days, they say, I'm going to terminate, term cancel the service. Well, they end up not canceling the service. So they go from free to maybe 90 or $100 a month. And then they decide, okay, I'm going to keep it. Some people are spending $180 plus just on cable alone. And um, sometimes they do it for a particular sports season or something like that, that's another way. Again, I let them see where their money's going so they can determine, because I can't force anybody to do anything, but I let them see their financial situation, help them to understand where their money's going so that it can help them to um, make cuts where, where it's necessary. Going back to this particular couple, after they were able to get their um, mortgage modified, they found out where their money was going, they set up a savings plan, they went from getting ready to walk away from their house to keeping their house to from saving zero dollars a month to actually saving sixteen hundred dollars a month with the same amount of money they were making and to me that's it's one of my success stories i love it because what it tells you is again a lot of people think the answer to their problems is making more money this couple was making a decent salary and continued to make the same amount of money. And as a result of making some changes, again, they were able to keep the house they had, they ended up saving $1,600 a month, and um, they, they started budgeting. And in fact, they went from not saving anything to be excited about saving money on a monthly basis. In fact, when he was laid off for a while, he said he didn't want to go into a savings. I said, that's why you have the savings. But it was great because they didn't miss a beat. But because they were saving the money, they were able to use that. Six weeks later, when he started working again, again, they didn't miss a beat, no late payments, and they started um, in a good position again. So again, that's where I start. I start with there, and then we, we look at a budget. A lot of people, for a lot of people, a budget is a bad word. They're like, I don't want a budget because I don't want to be restricted on how I spend. Well, actually, a budget is a tool, as I said, to help you know where your money is going. And that's just it. Again, a lot of people are just spending and they have no clue where their money is going. I'm going to reiterate, it's not how much money you make, it's what you do with the money you make. And if you know where your money is going, there's a better chance that you'll use it more wisely. So I help people see what's coming in, and help them see what's going out. And sometimes, if what's going out is more than what's going in, I say, you've got a decision to make. You've got a decision to make. You um, can cut expenses, or you can increase your income. Well, a lot of times, after tracking, they can see where they cut their expenses. And there are times, also, when I look at the situation and say, you actually have extra money at the end of the month. And they go, I don't know where that money is, because I don't see it. But as a result of budgeting and tracking, they can actually see it. So what I help them to do then is to create an emergency fund. What's an emergency fund? Well, 
What I tell people, it's for the unexpected things. And the thing about unexpected events, you can expect them to happen. Your car is going to break down. An appliance is going to break down. You're going to need unexpected money. And the thing is, is without an emergency fund, what's going to happen? You're going to use your rent money, your mortgage money, your bill money to use that. And then after that's taken care of, you're trying to figure out how am I going to make it up? Then you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. You end up trying to catch up and catch up and catch up. And then you end up sometimes taking out a payday loan. Payday loan is going to a, I wouldn't even call it a financial institution. I, I'm going to just say going to a predator who charges you high interest rates for a small amount of money. And then what's going to happen is because you're behind, you're going to pay it back with your check. But because you don't have enough money, you're going to go right back to that same uh, predator, if you will, and do the same thing over and over and over again. And sometimes people get trapped with that. They pay high interest rates. And I'm going to go to another client. They were doing the same thing. Banks started to offer, offer this. They realized how much money was in this. So what they would do is they would let clients borrow $500 every two weeks and they'd have to pay $50 for this service. Imagine the amount of interest for that. Well, what would happen is that payday, they would pay the $500, but of course, because they paid $500 for the loan, they would be short. Because they were short, they would borrow it again and then pay the $50, and they would continue to do so. By sitting down and showing them how they could save money and catch up, what they could do is pay that off never to go back therefore they wouldn't have to continue to pay that fifty dollars every two weeks that's a hundred dollars a month twelve hundred dollars a year for a five hundred dollar loan it's just crazy but again what people don't know can definitely hurt them and it puts them in a position where they seem hopeless and they don't know what to do and it happens a lot and as a result too people get depressed um, Financial worry, financial problems is one of the biggest causes of divorce. One of the biggest causes. Can you imagine all you're doing is worrying about money? There's very few people who are happy when they're worried about bill collectors. There's very few people who are happy when they don't know how they're going to pay their bills. You put a spouse into that situation, maybe blame and something going on. And on top of that, people have different spending habits. People value money differently. You might, a lot of times, like we say, opposites attract, you might have a spender who's attracted to a saver, and that happens. And as a result, if you have debt, it can be um, a recipe for a very, very unhappy marriage. So again, learning how to um, understand and budget and things like that can lead, I don't guarantee it, but it can lead to a happier relationship. Now, I, I get that the media targets certain populations of people with the, the new iPhones or the new electronics, yes. the new designer shoes or um, whatever the beauty industry says that we have to have to be pretty. Yes. And so we got all of this money that's coming out because we're still wanting to identify ourselves as being, so you you finished yes. that sentence oh for me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. What a sore subject. Um, I'm 52 years old. So I lived through the 80s. The bling bling. Conspicuous consumption. It was all about how you looked. And in our community, we bought into that big time. Even before then, I remember growing up in the 70s. It was so important to have a Cadillac or a Lincoln. It was so important to have brand names. I grew up, um, my, my parents, there were 12 of us. So they, I didn't even know. I knew we didn't have a lot of money, but I didn't know we were poor until people started making fun of the clothes we wore that came from Goodwill. I didn't know that. But a lot of people took that to another level. And because they were poor, as soon as they started working, they wanted to look like everybody else. So they bought into buying brand names and yes because of that the media the marketing picked up on that and they knew how important brand names are in our community and fortunately 
we manipulate each other with the same with the same messages which is so so unfortunate we look good but unfortunately we're not building wealth we look good but unfortunately a lot of times we're not buying things that will increase in value we are consumers more than we are owners and that that's very sad because what we do is we carry it on from generation to generation to generation and we say at least i look good but unfortunately as i started in the beginning we don't learn those mess we learn messages from our families from our parents but unfortunately those messages aren't productive those messages don't help us how to save money to learn how to keep debt low to learn how to prepare for retirement those messages really teach us to live for the here and now and i'm going to go into another sore subject for me and that is life insurance <laughs> the reason because within the last two or three years each of us has probably seen a post asking somebody to contribute to GoFundMe. Now I feel very very sorry for the family and their loss. However, if that person had either been educated or paid attention when life insurance was available, not only could they have saved their family some grief, but they could have set them up. There was a very very sad story I remember. It was very unfortunate. A gentleman was breaking up a fight and he was killed later on found out that he and his wife had seven children two income home and he didn't have any life insurance as a result they had to find money to bury him well they couldn't afford to live in that house anymore that's very very sad and the thing is that's why the financial education is so important in saving money interest is so so important the rate of interest we receive a lot of people in our community are only familiar with banks and credit unions. In this day and age, you may get one, two percent, if you're very, very lucky, rate of return from a bank. A lot of people in our community are not educated on investing. The thing is, is we can put away the same amount of money as someone who is educated and get a higher rate of return. However, at the end of 30, 35 years, they will have maybe three, four, five, ten times as much money put away as we would, and it's more because of our lack of knowledge. Not because of resources, if you will, but it's because of lack of knowledge. The unfortunate in our community, we're consumers and not as much owners. And it's so important to be owners. Owners are the ones who control the wealth in our country and control the wealth in our world. One thing I tell people, and I loved owning a home for the stability. But in an apartment, things can happen and you have to leave. When you're in a home, there's very few things that happen that you have to leave. That's because you own the home. And it's so important, I think, to teach those lessons to your children because there's so, so much transition in our community for different reasons. But again, if you're an owner, if you're an owner, you have a lot more value than if you're a renter. Credit is huge. I repeated that because it is so, so important. As I've talked with clients and helped them to set up a schedule to pay their bills, a lot of them are upset at the end of the month when they say, oh my goodness, I have nothing left. And I say, at least you were able to pay all of your bills on time. And one of the reasons I say that is because a lot of times, People have the money and still do not pay their bills on time. One, sometimes they don't match their um, bill payments with their paydates. Two, because they don't know where their money is going, they end up paying their bills late. And as a result of paying their bills late, again, they're throwing away money because they're late fees. When it comes to money, people can be very, very funny. And I say that because there's a lot of trust issues involved with money. However, if you're afraid or embarrassed to reach out, it can only hurt you. And educate your, educating yourself can keep you from paying more than you would and can help you to save more than you ever have. So knowledge is definitely power when it comes to money management. Well, thank you.
Mr. Diller says, be an owner, not a consumer. Absolutely. We appreciate you. Thank you. Bye.